Hey guys, it's Troy coming back here with another video and today I'm going to give you 5 tips on how to become a better automotive photographer. Let's go ahead and start with the first thing that is I think the most crucial part to becoming a better photographer and becoming better with people you are going to film with communication communication is number one because you need to know the time area the date what car you're even filming like those things are really crucial because that can depend on what gear you bring sorry I don't even know why I can't talk what gear you bring um, how many SD cards you bring, how many people, because sometimes you need to do roller shots. Me personally, sometimes uh, certain videos requir require me to do rolling shots, and a rolling shot is where the car is kind of driving, and I need a camera car, I need a person driving the subject car, and I need myself, and I need a gimbal. So there, that's one setting where I need to know, I text the person prior, and I'm like, hey, would you like roller shots or would you like a drone shot? Because that depends on if I need to bring my drone. But it's raining. If it's raining, why would you bring your drone? So you need to make sure you have perfect communication prior and throughout the video shoot. Number two, one thing that is super crucial and I did not do, I've, I've always heard people doing this and this can be done even if you're not even an automotive photographer. This can be done even if you are a regular photographer, a shot list. Now what a shot list is, it is a list or just bullet points in your head of what shots you would like to get. Now this can vary for everyone. I would love to give you my shot list, but my shot list changes every single car I video. I, if I was videoing that Hellcat back there, it's obviously in like the docks kind of then it would be different shots than if it was sitting in an open parking lot. Do you know what I mean? So each shot list varies depending on the time, setting, date, if it's raining, if it's cloudy, it can all depend. It can depend on if you're taking a video or if you're taking a photo. Because if you're taking photos, you don't need to be taking videos. So videos normally look different than photos. So it all depends. But this also ties in with communication with the person. You need to have communication with the person that way you know where you're filming, what car you're filming, because what car you're filming can also depend on the type of video. Now by type of video, I mean if you're filming a Japanese tuner car, you're most likely going to put kind of in, hate to say this, an anime type of, type of video together. But if you're filming in a classic American muscle car, you need to have a raw, powerful, like video yeah I don't even know what I'm saying but I hope that makes sense uh, so let's move on to number three now number three is practice editing now this is crucial because it's just you need to be able to edit now the filming part everyone can get down I learned filming in about a summer to be honest filming is not very hard and I didn't start out with the most insane things ever. I started out with a basic camera and that's it. I didn't even have a camera strap to like stabilize it. I had nothing. I just had a basic camera and eventually as my needs started growing I got another camera a Sony A6400 and I got gimbals. Right now it's sitting on a drone box because my tripod broke so I don't know if you can see but down here I have a drone. Over there I have a drone. It all depends on what you're going to but that also needs it needs kind of, I hate to reference this, but filming is kind of like a cake. When you're going out and filming, that's all the ingredients. It's every clip you take is kind of like a different ingredient, like the eggs, the milk, um, the, I don't even know, the flour, I don't bake. But, and then the editor, for instance, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, the editor is kind of like the thing that ties it all together. It makes it crisp, it makes it awesome, you can put your logos in there, Hint, that's actually one of the things I'm going to tell y'all. You can put logos in there using companies' logos, 
it kind of acts like the cherry on top of your videos. Now, different editing styles depend on the person. Me personally, I don't like to put a lot of fire and special effects on mine. I like to have mine a super clean video, and that's normally what I've been going for. If you go to the most, like the first car edit I made on my channel, you will see how horrible it is. And I left it on there because it's that horrible. I, I just go back and I laugh sometimes because I was editing on my phone. Now, investing in a computer like this, of course it doesn't need to be a computer like this. Like this is a fully built PC um, with all the specs. If you'd like a video on that, like, comment, and subscribe. Little plug there, you see how I did that. Um, but editing is crucial. Now you can invest in a computer that will give you, it will make editing a lot easier because at first I was editing on a laptop and to be honest, it, it got some of my videos done. Like um, I did a Lamborghini video on there. I did my first Lamborghini video on the laptop, but the it was so slow. It took like a day to edit. Where this thing, I could do it in five hours while watching YouTube and playing Xbox on Windows. So it makes it a lot easier to practice editing. And honestly, before you go out and film, take random clips like I do this all the time I literally I get my camera and I film all throughout this room like random things like I'll, I'll film the Xbox controller and then what I try to do is I try to jump into Adobe and I try to just put it together and practice putting special effects on it practice stabilizing it see what st you'll know sometimes you might not even know what stabilization is but for all the people that do know um, practice putting stabilizers on there because that helps Sometimes you don't always have a gimbal with you. Like to car shows, like all the cars and coffees I go to, honestly, I hate bringing a gimbal because I'm sitting there and I'm standing around for like 45 minutes. And a lot of times, like literally holding a huge gimbal sucks. It absolutely sucks. So practice editing prior and after the shoot. Now, sometimes, like when I first started, I needed about a week to get the video done. And I told my clients that. I was like, hey, Give me a week and I'll have your video done. Because oftentimes I would do about two or three videos. Like uh, if you go on my channel, don't don't click off now, but um, if you go down to my channel, there's a red reflective Jeep Trackhawk. It was the first Trackhawk in the world to have a reflective wrap. And I got the uh, opportunity to film it. But I there's on this computer, there's three versions of that video. That's how many versions I took, and then I specifically picked the best one and gave it to the client, and he ended up loving it, and it ended up getting a crap ton of views on Instagram. So practice editing, it is very, very crucial. Number four. Now, this one is going to actually kind of be two, um, so let's go ahead and do the first one. Having the necessary supplies. I can't tell you how many times I've done it about three times where I've showed up to a shoot and I had nothing like absolutely nothing I did a Rolls Royce Cullinan for for Wesley million dollar versions you can go look them up on YouTube or on um, Instagram I shot his blue Rolls Royce Cullinan on my phone completely on my phone because I had came back from practice and instead of getting all my stuff together before I went to school I ended up getting to I ended up not getting it together so I showed up to the shoot with my phone now that was the most embarrassing thing you can ever do another one of the most embarrassing things you can do is not having an SD card I've done it four times now every every photographer has done this before you have showed up to a shoot and not had an SD card I'm telling you pack your stuff beforehand it will save time it will save neatness like when you pull up to a shoe you'll look more professional if you have everything in boxes and you know exactly where everything is and you know how to use everything it just makes it more neat and more reliable now number four bonus I guess is looking pro like how to look pro in your videos and editing styles now this ties back in to editing um, but invest the time I can't tell you how much time I've put into making my own logo making your own logo or intro or um, credit like if you know how at the end of the movie there's the credits and you can see all the filmmakers who actually edited the, the movie make sure you have something to put that gives you credit because as a photographer 
when you're scrolling through Instagram, I've seen it twice now. I've seen someone take my photo and my video and another photo that I posted because I didn't have a logo on it and I didn't have a watermark. Now watermark is on specifically for photos. It's where you put your logo on on the photo basically giving you credit. Now that is super super important because I kind of like I kind of felt mad because that person took my photo and video and I was like, "Dang, I didn't have a logo on there." So when I go try to recover the photo back, they're like, "Ah, oh, man, how do I know it's yours?" I'm like, "Well, I I took the photo and they're like, oh, well, you don't have a logo on it. I was like, bruh, like it sucks when you don't have a logo or an intro screen or even on this video, you can see I put my intro in there. That way, if you're scrolling through the video, you know it's me. It gives, it gives you something for people to come back to you and search up your name. Now, number five, number five is probably the first thing you should do. Honestly, it's one of the first things you should do when you get your camera or your supplies or your editing software or even when you go to a shoot and you're videoing a car. Whether you're videoing a car or a flower, take the time to pause, stop, and know either the thing you're, you're, you're videoing, like for cars, I always go up to the car and I always kind of just walk around it and kind of look around to see in my head what would be the best shots and best angle of the car because once you figure that out you can put together a shot list and a shot list will give you everything you need that way you can be more organized and productive and just check off the boxes once you take all those video clips but even getting supplies once you get your supplies like your video supplies like a drone um, a camera a stabilizer Take the time, whether it's after school, during school, I've done it during school before, I brought my stabilizer and messed around with it, people thought it was hilarious, um, but take the time, especially this camera, like this camera right here, I spent 25 minutes before videoing this video just to get my ISO correct, I have two lights right there just to make sure my you can see my face. I've had my, my wheel, I have everything looking pretty, that way it's more eye pleasing for y'all to see because y'all don't want to stare at my ugly face with no light, I mean, come on, like let's be real. So take the time and get to know your, your camera. Like for instance, on the Sony A6400, it comes stock with the worst colors ever, like I'm telling you the worst colors ever. I literally after school sat outside for a whole t like 15 to 20 minutes just getting the colors correctly because I didn't like like the way stock like the camera came out of the box it was showing like my skin tone it honestly it made me look like a vampire so I kind of got a little bit of like Canon colors in it but just by playing around and getting to know your camera I do it with stabilizers I do it with drones every week I try to fly my drone around my neighborhood just to get more practice. The more practice you get, the better your videos and photos will look. I am telling you from experience. Now, quick side note, here's a little story time. My first drone I got, let me pull it out right here. This is the Mavic Pro right here. I'll set that to the side. The first day, no, the second day I got this drone, um, I was flying it because I had a shoot the next day. I was filming, I want to say I was filming a red WRX STI. I'll play that video on the screen right now. Uh, but I was filming that car the next day. So I was like, oh gosh, he wants drone footage. So what do I do? I have to practice because I had just opened it out of the box and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So I set it up, I took it outside, and I started flying it. Little did I know it was a very, very, very windy day. And drones do not do good in the, in the wind. They don't do good in the rain either. I was about to say rain. Um, but I was flying up, and I was about 15 feet in the air. And for all you drone people, you know that's not very high. It was so windy that it literally flipped the drone over, and it crashed into the floor. And I was stuck the next day, and I had to wait a whole month and a half for a person locally in Houston 
to fix my drone. And I, and I ended up paying more to fix it than what I actually bought the drone for. So take the time and try to get experience with your equipment. That way, I mean, at least I crashed it in my neighborhood and not on top of that person's car. Like imagine if it was flying in the air and a person's paying me a lot of money to video their car and I crashed a drone on their car. That would be very, very, very embarrassing. So I hope those things helped. Now let's go ahead and recap. The first one is communication. Have communication with the drivers, the person you're going with. If you're young like me, make sure to tell your parents prior to the day of the shoot, sometimes prior the week of the shoot. Um, that way they can get you there on time and you can have the most time to video. Number two is create a shot list. But remember, you need to have communication with the person and you also need to scope around what you're videoing. That way you can get the best shot list to have the cleanest looking video. Number three is practice editing. Make sure to watch tutorials. And if you would like to see some of my editing tutorials, even if you don't video cars, if you would like to see some of my some of the ways I edit videos like this, like literally I'm talking in front of the camera, I will show you how to edit. Oh, I had a voice crack. That was weird. Um, <laughs> I will show you how to edit videos like this. Um, so get me, give me about 25 likes and I will show you how to edit videos. Um, number four, make sure to invest the time, invest the money in creating your own logo. If you would know, if you want to know how to create your own logo like I did or your own intro screen, like, comment, and subscribe and comment logo on the bottom of this video and I will show you how to make a logo or an intro. Number five, know your stuff. It'll make you look so much more professional and you'll be able to start charging more for all the stuff you know. Get to know your camera. Spend time outside. Practice with your camera. Practice with it on a stabilizer. Practice with your drone. Don't crash it, but practice. It will give you a more professional look and you'll be a more responsible photographer. Hope that helped you out. That was a long one, but I will see you next time and try to try to show me some of your video clips on Instagram at Troy Bias. I want to see some of the videos that y'all took. So I will see you next time. Bye.